So please welcome to the Today's Leader podcast, Building Tomorrow's Best Leaders Today. Please welcome Eric Rebello. How are you? Good afternoon, mm-hmm. Eric. Good afternoon. I'm doing pretty good. What about you? I'm fantastic. It's Sunday in your part of the world, isn't it? It's first thing Monday morning for me. So um, thank you for taking time out of your Sunday to um, invest in today's leaders. So let's uh, get started by sharing a little bit of the Eric Rebello story. Yeah, so I basically run a uh, digital business development firm, which is like marketing and sales, and we help uh, service-based business owners uh, with ads, website design, SEO, you know, sales training, like all these different things to try and help them get more clients and scale their business. That's my main thing. And then as far as like my personal life goes, I really like to focus on optimizing my personal life and kind of sharing a bit of that as well, because business owners can only be really as scalable as their personal lives, you know what I mean? Or really as optimized as their personal Mm -hmm. lives. So whatever happens in your personal life usually manifests itself into your business. You have to have both of those on point. So I like to share some of that as well. So tell me about, let's talk uh, and maybe focus in on that optimization because it is something that uh, is becoming increasingly uh, mindful of in in the world that we know mm-hmm. today. We, we've got a lot of uncertainty. We've got a lot of people that are really quite fearful of everything that's going around. So personal as I, uh, personal optimization, walk me through that. Yeah, so basically I define that as simplifying my life in the absolute best way possible in every single area. I see a big problem in our society nowadays is we just have too much stimulus, too much things going on. Our brains aren't meant to handle the current society that we're in, even though people say, you know, civilization has really progressed extremely fast, you know, and done a lot of things with technology and everything's great, but our biology hasn't really caught up with that yet. So for example, Uh, I've read, you know, books of, you know, people that have talked about in in science where they say, you know, we were only supposed to be in 150 person tribes. You know what I mean? That's kind of what our brains Mm -hmm. are meant for. So the fact that we have TikTok and Instagram where we now keep up with thousands of people's lives, our brains just can't really handle that. And how our brain thinks about each person that we come across that we see on a semi-frequent basis. If we see them like one time, it's different. But if we see them on a pretty frequent basis, our brain doesn't know the difference between someone that's on the other side of the world and someone in our actual reality or local life. So it it starts taking up space in that 150 person tribe. And it's just too much to keep up with. And with all the notifications and crazy stuff that people have on their phone where they're getting, you know, dings on their phone every 20 seconds, it's just too much stimulus to handle. And that's why a lot of people have anxiety and kind of, you know, weird kind of emotional things that they're going through other than everything that's obviously happened. That's been really tragic. Other than that, it just adds to it where people are just going through stuff that they're perfectly in control over of just turn off the notifications on your phone or whatever it is. So that to me is like, you know, part of it, but really where I kind of focus on is removing as many like things in my life that are unnecessary as possible. So like with diet, with exercise, with your living space, with your devices, like I remove any bookmarks on my computer I don't need. I delete as many apps as I can. I delete as many con or uh, you know messages and things like that Mm. just to get rid of all of it because I don't need that much stimulus. (laughs) And every every (laughs) stimulus basically just takes up mental energy, and that's mental energy you could be using for something else. So is that uh, because you know, so just say, let's talk about bookmarks for Mm -hmm. a second. So many people would have thousands upon web pages, thousands of web pages that are bookmarked or in the old term added to their favourites. So, And um, is that because we know it's there and we just never go, it's to me it's sort of, representative of the storage shed scenario we just keep throwing things in the storage shed and then close the door and and we never actually go back to the storage shed so is that one of the things that you see as to why you then um 
delete those or, or continually delete those things like bookmarks in our lives. Yeah, yeah. No, you perfectly explained it. Where it's kind of like uh, the, there's a word for it called hoarding, right? Where you hoard a lot of stuff <laughs> and that's like in real life. But there's a yeah. form of digital hoarding now that people are doing to where they have tons of apps, tons of bookmarks, tons of everything. And they're never going to go back to it. And that that will like if you just remove those things it will give you so much more mental energy to do things like people wonder why they're tired mm. all the time and exhausted it's like because you're literally just firing all these things in your brain like your dopamine and serotonin all day every day and how those things work is they're relative like if you think in the past yeah maybe in like the night or 1900s or something like that if you wanted to feel dopamine or you wanted to feel serotonin or have these brain chemicals go off you had to do a lot more and take a lot more action and like challenge yourself to really get those now you just open an app on your phone and you have those within two seconds and it's really mm. degraded the quality of people's brain chemicals and i'm not saying that in a disrespectful way i just mean literally like your brain chemicals are firing yeah. too much and you don't that's why a lot of people also feel sadness and different things like that because their dopamine is just getting spiked so often that that's their new base point and they can't get above that so then the only way is down and that's where it ends up really bad to where mm. people do social media detoxes and do these retreats and go out in the middle of the forest for a week with no communication is because they need to reset and kind of like let all that go back to its normal baseline so you can feel those brain chemicals again yeah so is this also part of the process around our own physical wellness and our own physical being, getting out in nature, going for walks or or doing some form of exercise? That that also, I'd imagine, plays a role in this area. Yeah, no, I try to get sunlight every day. Uh, people need to take vitamin D supplements. I'm not like a, by the way, I'm not a, um, I have to tell everybody, I'm not like a fitness <laughs> advisor or diet advisor or health person <laughs> or anything like that. I'm not qualified to really talk about this at all. Yeah. But for I just know what works in my own personal life is I take uh, omega-3 supplements, I take vitamin D, zinc, especially right now. There's been studies with, with zinc and certain things that are going on right now. And uh, if you look into that, and then keeping my immune system high with vitamin C and drinking lots of water, I drink like alkaline water. I have all these things kind of figured out for my personal life that I really like to do that have made a yeah. huge impact. Like even, uh, I haven't really said this on any of my social media, but for the past maybe nine months or so, I haven't really eaten a lot. I mean, I do slip up, but uh, gluten and dairy, I don't really eat those anymore. Okay. And what I've found is for my personal body type and my genetics and all that type of stuff, gluten and dairy is not good for me. It makes me feel yeah. just sluggish and inflamed and just bad every time I eat it. And I, mm. I have a pizza every once in a while or something like that, but uh, honestly, it's not really worth it. Like every time I do have it, I'm kind of like, eh, like I shouldn't have <laughs> ate that pizza or whatever it was. So yeah, yeah but people, uh, people should look at every little thing in their life that takes mental mm. energy away from them or just anything they interact with on a daily basis. Like if you have a messy desk, you most likely have a messy yeah. life. You know, like if you have a yeah. messy car, if you have a messy anything, like how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you, mm. if you struggle with focus or anything like that, clean up your workspace, clean up your house, clean up whatever you can, your phone. And once you get rid of all these things, you'll notice you have a lot more energy and focus that you can put towards, you know, business. And that's how I've been able to really focus on my digital marketing agency is like just getting rid of everything else. I have no other option but to focus yeah. on that. So, yeah, it, it's um, you raise so many good points, and and firstly, you've gone through the process on, and I suppose you're an expert in in what's good for you, and um, you know, so and I I think there's real value in that, Eric. So, um, but how did you? Is it like a trial and test process as you work through some of these things? That some things work, some things mm -hmm. didn't work. Um, walk me through that process. Yes, it's always trial and error. So how I did that is I treat it kind of like uh, like the what is that like the scientific method, right? You got to try something out, see if it works. You have a hypothesis of how it's going to work, and then it either works or it doesn't. And I've done this with so many things in my life that it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. And you, the 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 key part of that is you have to test one thing at a time. If you test multiple things at a time, you don't know which caused 
or well, yeah, which caused the result. So for example, even with like yeah. skincare, this is going to sound super weird, but like skincare products, you know, I've, I've tried like a bunch of them and I see how each of them reacts to my skin and I'll like look online and see, okay, that this particular skincare product for men usually works like this for everybody else. So then I try it, but it works the complete opposite for me. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to use that. Uh, eating certain food, you know, I can eat white rice, right? Everybody's like, white rice is totally fine. Sometimes when I eat white rice, apparently, specifically white rice, not brown rice, is connected to certain inflammatory properties. And that gives me a little bit of like inflammation in, in my body, right? So it's like each okay. thing, you have to test one at a time and see what it does, but it's major trial and error to see. And it's the same thing with business. If you're trying to figure out if something's going to work, you have to try it and <laughs> figure it out. You know, have a, mm. have a good testing period that's long enough to... Because like also some people only try things for like a day, right? They'll go to the gym and they'll be like, I did this one yeah. workout and it didn't work. It didn't make me skinny or whatever. It's like, mm. okay, now you have to do it for an elongated <laughs> period of time to really figure out if it's a good test or not or if it was successful. But so that's kind of a yeah. nuance within that. And tell me about the crossover then between that personal uh, personal op um, optimization and marketing clients because i'd imagine there would be a range of clients that you'd see in your marketing mm -hmm. business who are really quite potentially all over the place and looking at um shiny objects and looking at all the distractions and trying to make um sense of mm -hmm. everything without necessarily making sense of anything so so tell me about how that crossover works for you yeah like i said before how you do anything is how you do everything or vice versa right and I see mm -hmm. some of my clients, they have personal life stuff that I tried to help them with, right? So I'm trying to put together something that uh, like eventually I do want to put together maybe like a free program or something like that for my clients because I already have a free program for any clients that work with me and my team is I have an inbound sales program. And let me kind of go through that to understand like the concept of yeah. what I'm doing. So when I... When me and my team set up ad campaigns and websites and funnels to get more customers, right, for these clients, that we would handle the entire process from the customer first seeing them in an advertisement to actually getting on the phone with them and like setting an appointment and going on a call. And we handled that entire process. That was our system. And we just kind of repeated it for a lot of our different clients and, you know, messed with different things depending on what industry they're in. But when they would actually get on the phone with them and like, you know, attempt to, to sell the prospect on, on the phone of whatever service that they have, then it would not really work so well. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm going to take this on as my responsibility, even though it's not, it's their, it's their, you know, responsibility to, to close the clients. But I'm like, let me see how I can help. So I started thinking about, okay, what's the best and easiest, simplest way that I can describe sales to an average business owner um, that is not familiar and not doesn't have a lot of experience with sales? Mm. And I really just came down to asking questions, solving objections, and basically like trying to close the deal or like making an offer, you know, some type of call to action. And if you just repeat those three yeah. things kind of over and over on a sales call, you will eventually get to a sale, most likely. And when you ask them questions at the beginning, like, you know, what problems are you having? How long have you had this problem? What else have you tried? How committed are you to solving this problem? Is this like an urgent thing? You start asking them all these questions, or if I can teach my clients to ask those questions, then they understand their customer's problem better than, you know, probably a lot of their competitors. Then when they go to the objection section, you know, they start, they have like, you know, a couple standard objections that they hear from a lot of different clients. If I can tell them how to kind of work around those or at least, you know, try to overcome them or anything like that. And then uh, the offer statement of like actually how to close, you know, the deal. If I can teach them that, they're going to do a yeah. lot better. So I took that on, right? The next evolution, I yeah. think, is what you're talking about where, okay, they can sell the clients, but now their personal lives are messy, right? So like, I mean, I don't know if I'm actually mm. going to make this like program or not, but I'm, I'm, I kind of want to because I actually am going to make it for my own team. Cause like, that's like where it originated of like, let me make this for my own team so I can give it to them for free yeah. and ha they can have really simple, minimal, awesome lives and then they can do better work. Right. So and then I was like, okay, what if I can give that to my clients? Right. So I'm still developing all these ideas, but if they, uh, to go back to your question, 
if my clients mm. or any business owners have really messy lives, lots of chaos, lots of things going on, some of it's uncontrollable, right? So like you understand, right? Like yeah. everybody has different lives, but you want to focus on lowering that amount of chaos absolutely as much as possible because business will give you enough chaos. Business will give you enough ups and downs and crazy stimulus mm. that you want to lower it in every other aspect you possibly can because you're going to have enough of it. So that's kind of my thought process of it of like business will give me enough challenges. I don't need to create my own challenges in my life. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, I think if business owners can just simplify and remove as much things as possible. And I mean that in like every area, like, you know, they say, you know, when they say like the friends that you hang out with are who you become, it's like, okay, like you use that same mm -hmm. methodology of, are there people that are not good for me? Right. Like, and then you unfortunately mm -hmm. have to not, not talk to them anymore because they're not, they're, they're adding negativity into your life or whatever it is. Yeah. And it's like same thing with employees. If they have employees that are not committed to whatever their vision is, they have to say that you're not a good fit for this company. And yeah, uh, yeah even their own personal thoughts. That's another thing is like some business owners, like I've heard this to where they've scaled to a certain point and then all of a sudden they're like, okay, yeah. we have to turn off marketing. We can't handle this or like whatever it is or, you know, oh, we're, or, you know, my sales team is doing too much. I think we need to slow down. We can't like, uh, keep up with the demand mm -hmm. and the delivery of the service. It's like, well, okay, you need to hire more people. That, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> it's not really bad, right? Yeah. And they start having these success barriers at these different points. So it's like all this stuff is something that I probably want to take on as well and see if I can help uh, in any way. I don't know if, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can, but I, I can do my best, you know? It's like an integrated business support system you, that you're talking about because you're right, there are so many people that um, A, don't necessarily have clarity around who their customers truly are or who they should be targeting or actually the problem that they're solving in some cases. It, there's, there's been an evolution of of their business that's got them to a stage and, and I hear that concept of turning off marketing and slowing things down so often because of the complexities that are occurring within the business world that business owners, some business owners don't want to embrace. So, and, and I, I, I get that. I get that. But by the same token, it's then harder for them to turn it back mm -hmm. on when they're ready to go. So, so I think sometimes it's about being on a treadmill and just going as hard as and fast as you can and hoping that you're building understanding and trust in your client base so that they um, they sort of go on that journey with you. And there's so. two things within that, which you just said too, because complexity, right? If you can remove the complexity from every other area, it's a lot easier to handle the complexity mm. that you're current, currently dealing with in your business. So there's that. But then the second conversation that probably most people also need to have is how much do you actually want to get? Like, if you can, if you can be clear, like you said, on like what you actually want, mm. who you serve, all that type of stuff, maybe the business owner only wants to have a $2 million a year revenue business. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe that's what they want to do. Yeah. And then they just want to hang out with their family a bunch and have like, you know, that type of lifestyle. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's like, if you're clear on that, mm. you know what you want, that's super respectable that other people, they want to scale as much as they can. So it really depends. I think, I mean, I think it's always better to lean on the edge of let me scale as much as I can because you never know what's going to happen in your business and it could, you know, some, something, you could take a real hit in revenue like dips and mm. stuff like that. So you always want to be growing a little bit because if you're not growing, you're basically going down because uh, also of inflation yeah. <laughs> uh, and all these different things. So you always want to, yeah. you know, be scaling it up a little bit, but some people don't want to scale times 20. They only want to scale times 1.2 three mm. every year or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. So that's a conversation some people need to have, but I like to deal with uh, business owners that, that are really trying to scale a lot because they understand the power of marketing and advertising and branding and sales and really pushing that because they know that they can impact a lot of different clients with whatever service they have. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. So Eric, who's um, inspired you in your journey? Um, I think I, I'm the type of person that, from a very young age, actually, and I'm not trying to like boast or anything like that, but I've noticed this about myself of ever since I was young, I was really uh, comfortable with lowering my ego and learning from other people. Um, so I've learned from a lot of people like people 
yeah. throughout my entire life, even if it's just one little thing, I can learn something from them. Even how you just how they act, how they think about themselves, how they do business, how they do fitness, how they communicate with their spouse, whatever mm. it is, I've learned from everything because, I mean, a lot of people are usually good at something. You know what I mean? There's something that they just have a natural knack for or talent for, and it's like I like to learn that. But the people I really like to learn from are people that are kind of like multifaceted or if they're and my, my the, basically the big three for me is, is their health on point? Is their wealth on point? And are their relationships on point? Mm. And I guess the fourth would be like happiness or fulfillment. But like if you have the first three, usually you're pretty happy or fulfilled. So it's like, <laughs> like I just look at those three. Like if, if someone has those, the health, wealth and relationships thing kind of down, I'm like, you're a successful person to me. So yeah. I want to learn as much as I can from that person, especially because they're multifaceted. If you can, like, most yeah. people don't, unfortunately, have all three of those taken care of. You know what I mean? Like, either their business is doing really well mm. and they have a good relationship with their spouse, but then their health is kind of declining or, you know, something is kind of uh, awry, right? So I like to learn mm. from people uh, that have all those taken care of. But I like to, like, I like to look at, like, stoicism. Uh, stoicism is a really big thing for me of, like, back in the day, like, Marcus yeah. Aurelius and Epicurus and Seneca and Plato and all those different things because it's really incredible to me that at that time they understood so much and, like, it's relevant to mm. right now. And this is going to this is gonna sound a little bit odd to probably some of your, uh, some of your audience, but I almost treat stoicism a little bit like a religion, and I think that it would be really helpful for a lot of people to ha like a lot of people are struggling right now with lack of direction, mm. lack of purpose, lack of meaning, and just they, they feel lost. This is what I've heard from some people that I've, I've talked to. Right. And religion is one of those things. Religion doesn't have to be like a Christianity or whatever. Religion is just a mindset or a kind of philosophy that you believe. Yeah. Right. And I almost want to say to anybody that's not currently religious, if you look into stoicism, it could kind of, be treated as a, I, almost, I won't use the word religion, I'll use the word philosophy, of you can live your life through that because they figured out so many different things on really, but like what I'm talking about, like personal optimization, like how to deal with others, how to talk mm. to yourself, how to believe in yourself, how to go about life with integrity. They, they, it's like a, it's a whole philosophy that you can just take and just run with it. So yeah. For me, I'm, I'm a really big fan of stoicism. Books to, to read that make it really easier by Ryan Holiday, like The Daily Stoic and Obstacle is the Way and different stuff like that. So I like his books. He really takes the stoic philosophies and brings them into the modern time. But yeah, just stuff like that or just other business owners that I see. Uh, one of my mm -hmm. good friends is a, mark, is a mentor of mine. He has a business that's like much bigger than mine, but similar, but not exactly the same. So he teaches me a lot of stuff, but... Yeah, I, I learned from a lot of people, so it's kind of hard to, to name everybody. Yeah. And and you talked about a number of different traits during that um, com uh, that discussion as well, you know, things like growth mindset, for example, mm -hmm. uh, are traits that we want leaders to have. So what are some of those other traits? You, you talked about stoicism and, and uh, growth mindset. So what are some of the other traits that you see are really integral for a leader today? That's a good one. I think like emotional maturity and being able to okay. handle their inner their inner self first before they worry about others like leading by mm. example i think is one of the biggest things because i'm sure everybody that's listening right now has had a boss that does not lead by example they tell you to do something mm. they don't show you by their own actions and that's a big thing to me um because that's hypocritical you know what i mean if someone isn't doing what they tell you to do right then it just doesn't really make sense yeah. and that's why i like listening to mentors that have been there and done that because those are people worth listening to so for me i think the biggest yeah. thing is is that emotional maturity but then more importantly leading by example in whatever area if your mentor or your boss is um you know really focused on fitness and their health and kind of like maintaining themselves and then also their uh their wealth and you know making sure that they have enough resources to give back to the causes they have and their family and whatever and then they also have really good relationships where people feel understood and they're close with them and they're respected mm. all of those qualities are really someone that you want to listen to 
And if you can, if your boss or your, you know, client or not clients, but like if whoever you work with on a daily basis doesn't, you know, have those qualities, then, uh, you know, try and find people that, that have those qualities or try and help your inner circle gain those qualities, whatever it is. Just, yeah, just really be focused on, on trying to, to grow mm-hmm. as much as possible because I've, I've recently kind of came across this idea of, you know, people always joke about, well, what's the meaning of life? I actually think for humans, it's progress. Progress is the meaning of life yeah. because if you're not progressing, usually people feel really sad and depressed and whatever. This is man, mm. woman, anything, whatever you are. Like basically progress is what really fuels us and makes us feel really great in whatever area. And there's a billion things to progress yeah. in until you know, you're no longer here. So yeah, mm. I would say that all of those things are really important. Yeah, I love that concept. A couple of things you just talked about, emotional maturity. I I, I love that concept because I, I, you can see, unfortunately, um, with the people that we know and people around us, that sometimes that level of maturity emotionally is, is quite mixed. But I also love that concept of progress. So every day we're stepping closer to where we want to be or, or, or the goals that we set or the vision that we have. So... Um, talk me through, Eric, your relationship that you have with failure. Yeah, so that's a good one. I think most business owners have a interesting relationship with failure where they're okay with it from a high level or kind of like a macro level, but micro level, they don't like it. You know what I mean? So obviously Mm. when you're going through something in the short term, you don't want to fail at it and you put all of your effort, all of everything you have into that, that project or whatever you're trying to do to make sure you don't fail. But then if you do, yeah. you kind of know in the long term, like, this is fine. It's not that big of a deal. I can just, you know, try again or whatever it is. So that's kind of my thing is like in the short term, I try to make sure there are zero mistakes, zero failures, zero mm. everything. I want to think about every little detail that could possibly go wrong and try and fix that. Right. And some people say that that's bad, but I, it's just my personality type. I tend to be a little bit more analytical and trying to figure something out. Yeah. I, I, I think of it as do it right the first time and you won't have to yeah. you know, do it again. Usually it doesn't end up like that though. It's just a good goal to have of mm-hmm. make the decision once. So you never have to do it again. You know what I mean? So yeah. once I do that, you know, if I end up, you know, not hitting the goal or whatever it is, at least I'm closer, you know, like we talked about progress. So mm. it's, I, I think it's that kind of dichotomy between short term able to, you know, to really focus on not failing, but then in the long term being okay with failures that lead you to those successes. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the most important things is that, and it's interesting you talked about first time right, because that is so important in generating efficiency in any business to to have a first time right process and not having to go back and redo things. Um, so there's, and once again, that you know, failure for so many people stops them in their tracks because of that. No one wants to fail, but sometimes it's the best learning. And very rarely do we learn when we've actually succeeded. We may have had a whole litany, lit, lit, a lot mm. of things go wrong on our journey, to, but somehow we, we got there and succeeded. Mm. And often we won't take those learnings that we had along the way. It's only when we fail that those learnings really become self-evident mm-hmm. to us. So. Yeah, no, it's true. I see, I so see Eric, a lot of people that, well, actually, I mean, that, that's also just kind of how humans work is we are more focused yeah. on the failures because of the survivability tactic. You know, whenever we win, mm-hmm. our DNA is kind of like, cool, like you, you handled it, you got it, you're fine. But then whenever there's a failure, our brain, it's kind of like attributing it to like a saber toothed tiger trying to come after us. It's like, it's a threat. Mm. There's something we have to focus on here or else we could, a threat to our lives, right? And our brains don't know the difference between that. So whenever there's a failure, you're way more likely to focus on it because your DNA or your, yeah, basically your brain just thinks there's a threat going on. So it makes sense why people do that. But I would, you know, maybe I guess I could give a tip for that too of, have some type of gratitude journal or remember your successes and remember mm. your wins and like celebrate those. Cause there's a lot of business owners that were driven by solving problems. And basically what that means yeah. is mitigating failure, right? Like if we're going to sell a mm. service, we don't want the service to fail. So we do everything in our power to, 
to make sure it doesn't. And in that time, we have to, because we're so focused on the problems and so focused on, you know, getting the results in every area, it's tough to really remember, okay, we finally got the results and we have to celebrate that. We have to make sure that we remember those wins because it, it helps us mm-hmm. get along the way to, to do more. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the vision for yourself, Eric, going forward? Uh, my vision is, I as of right now, you know, it could always change, but I'm going to grow grow my company, keep doing that. I'm going to keep solving problems for my clients that are important for growing their business and just keep growing that. Next year, um, I'm, I'm going to try and write a book. Uh, so that's going to be a thing that's going to try and help people that maybe can't afford my services or just want to learn more about like whatever my philosophy is for, for marketing and growing a business. Okay. I have a podcast that I'm going to try and grow and interview you know business owners and things. I eventually want to get into the software business, you know, like down the road because I've seen that, that that's been wow. pretty good. And yeah, just continuing my journey on on trying to increase my health, wealth, relationships. So what have you been, out of everything that you've accomplished over the, you know, your, your journey, what are you most proud of? That's a really good question. Uh, I think I'm most proud of, man, I, I think the thing that I'm most proud of is along the way, I've been continually able to have conversations with myself that are difficult. That's been Mm. extremely important because every year I tend to focus on, you know, improving more and more. But then some people, when they get to a certain point are like, I've, you know, I'm okay now. I don't need to do that improvement work or anything. And it's like, no, you always Mm. have to do that because if you're not focusing on it, it ends up just not, you know, declining. So I've always had been able to have these like hard conversations with myself and this like awareness of like how I'm feeling, what I need, all of that to like keep growing and get better. So that's, that's probably been like the biggest thing for me is, is a lot of people struggle having those difficult conversations with themselves because they don't want to admit something or trigger something or just Mm. feel bad or whatever. And just realize that those like negative emotions or whatever that you have to face is part of your character development. It's making you better. You wouldn't have the, the, you know, highs without the lows. You know what I mean? So if you can have mm. those difficult conversations with yourself, kind of figure out what possible things you can fix or you know improve upon, that's going to allow you to get to those highs that you really want. So I guess I guess it would be that of being able to to talk with myself and be honest. Excellent. So. So, Eric, how can people connect with you? So if they've been listening today, they've taken some of this on uh, and they've said to themselves, I need to have a chat with this guy, whether it's about marketing or whether it's about, you know, what you've discussed in respect of being the best mm-hmm. you, how can they do that? Yeah, so if, uh, if you're a business owner and, you know, you have a service-based business or anything like that, you can reach out to me on my website, ericrebello.com or any of my social media channels. It's all just Eric Rebello. You can send me a message. You can you know, fill out the form on my website and all that type of stuff. We can get on a call and talk about how I can help you. If I, you know, if you're not quite at that point yet or whatever, I can have other solutions. We'll, I can find a way to help you in some, in some way. If you're not a business owner, you can still hopefully benefit from, from my videos. I do have some kind of personal development content on my YouTube and things like that. Again, just Eric Rebello. But uh, yeah, anybody can reach out to me and, and ask me a question or anything, and I'll, I'll try and help to the, my best ability or maybe even make a video out of their question or whatever it is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I got everything, podcast, YouTube, all that type of stuff. Excellent. And I'll put all those links in the show notes. So um, Eric, thank you so much for your time today, especially taking time out on a Sunday afternoon. I'm really appreciative of that and for your investment in today's leaders. Absolutely. I'm super appreciative for you having me on. It was really great. You asked really good questions. I like it. And I'm sure that everybody in the audience will hopefully benefit from this conversation, at least maybe just one thing. So if you if you got one thing, leave a, leave a comment down below of what it was. Excellent. Thank you so much, Eric. We'll Thanks. talk soon.